it's the next level. Gelanhe. Já foi. Zenatzit. Those days are over. I know. I just wanted to see how the new you reacts to the old words. Something is still in there. At least you were not conscious for most of your imprisonment. That time wasn't exactly a picnic. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. It was never personal. You were simply a means to a necessary end. Panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about the third episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And which episode are we covering? <laughs> episode three, Power Broker. Yeah. And uh, our synopsis is to find the source of the Super Soldier Serum, Sam and Bucky must scale a ladder of low life starting in Madripoor with Zemo. Yeah. Got Baron Zemo back, or at, yep. at the time we only knew him as Zemo, and felt right. in the Captain America and the Winter Soldier movie. But mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, was that the first introduction in the movies of him? Yes, yeah, it was the first time we've ever seen him. And this episode, we got more lot. information about him, mm -hmm. which was really really cool. Yeah. Now, did we did we hear his name mentioned in Age of Ultron, or was he actually in? Age of Ultron. Do you remember? I really need to rewatch those three movies. He just to get... was part of it. Yeah. Because if you... Yeah. I I think so. Or no. I thought he was the one that was... Uh... By the phone. Okay. If I thought he wasn't the one experimenting on uh, Wanda and Pietro. No, 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 no. That oh, was okay. all a Hydra. Oh, okay. Okay. No, but they might have, I think there might have been a deleted scene that he was in where he was on the phone with his wife and his child or something. And now that's when they, they died okay. because it was gotcha. in Sokovia. Right. And that's what set up Winter Soldier. Correct. Right. Now, now I'm tracking. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what were your initial thoughts of this episode? You know, it, it's, it's great. The third episode, I finally found one that I loved after my very first watch <laughs> of it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, there was, there were some confusing things. There was one really big confusing thing uh, for me the first time I watched it that I kind of got cleared up on the second watch. And we'll, we'll talk about that uh, in our discussion. And there was, there was just a lot of things that as not having a lot of comic knowledge there's things that I just I didn't know about. Yeah, and, you, you could just watch this without even having that knowledge. Oh, absolutely. Too. Oh, absolutely. But I, I'm I'm glad for you know like our podcasts and TV podcast industries that kind of can go deeper into these things and that they have the knowledge and like you have some comic knowledge as well, mm. so you get to help me understand things a little bit better. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it, it's interesting to give a comparison to what they do in the comics at times based on mm -hmm. character. And Zemo is such an anomaly, though, uh, and even in the comics. So uh, they didn't really – I don't think they ever really – he was pretty much just like a tyrant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And they – I don't think uh, from what I – the issues I had read with him in it, mm -hmm. he really didn't have much of a backstory within the issues that I that I had. Okay. So – but from this, they, they gave him one, which is really cool. But uh, there's still something – even after this episode, it's like, there's something he's up to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's got to be something more going on with him than, uh, than, than what it is. And we'll talk some about that. Um, I really paid attention to the credits this time. And so I, and I was able to pause it, uh, at the very, 
last credits that listed all the players. So I have some information that I didn't know earlier, and I was really glad that I was able to get that pause in there. Yeah, uh, there, there's a lot of other people that are researching the end credits where they show flashes of things, uh, mm -hmm. like within comics or pages of like newspaper articles yeah. and things of that nature. People are going into that and finding things too. I really did not put the time into that because you have to really zoom in on that stuff. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do those. I I simply wanted to. It was one person that I really wanted to identify from the cast, and I was able to do that with the with my pausing of the credits. So cool. Yeah. Well, I really enjoyed the first time I saw it, and then the second time I really loved it. It, mm -hmm. it was really cool to see. You know, having. Sam and Bucky on two different thoughts about going about with Zemo mm -hmm. and then plus the antics within the episode <laughs> got me to the, the humor in it, even though the, it was action filled, you know, Yeah. but you, you had those little, uh, cuts in there too. And there will be more in my notes with, you know, what I enjoyed about the episode as we go on. The, the funniest one that I didn't have my notes is they did make mention about Kong <laughs> I did. I heard that when what did, uh, it was Falcon said something about Skull Island. He referred yeah. to Madripoor like you guys are talking about, like it's Skull Island. And I was like, huh, huh. that's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. It's like they got another reference in there from yeah. me that just came out, you know, right around the same time. And which I don't think they were anticipating at this point. No, I'm sure they, they couldn't have been, but it is a happy coincidence. Yeah. So with that, we should get into our top fives, right? Absolutely. Uh, do you want to start this week? Sure. Supercharged. You're going back to jail. Do you want to find Carly or not? He's right. We need him. And there's two of us and at least 20 of them. Come on. Fine. But if you try that shit again... Wouldn't dream of it. Well, that was one hell of a reunion. Come back to the States with us. I told you I can't. Just get me that part and you promised me. Thanks for everything. You're not going to move your seat up, are you? No. Well, my number five would be Bucky telling Sam how they would get Zemo out of prison. But in mm -hmm. the end, Bucky had already did it. So basically, yeah. he just played it all out and how they would do it. And Sam goes, oh, that would be a bad idea. And <laughs> then the next thing you know, Zemo comes walking out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> but the scene was pretty cool in how he had it done. Mm -hmm. And it just reminded me something out of Burn Notice. It's yeah. something that they would do in one of those episodes. Yeah, or like Ocean's 12 where they're describing what they're going to do and, and stuff like that. It was This was the scene that had the confusing moment for me. And the first time I watched it, when they got through that whole – uh, the whole prison break thing and Zemo comes out, I, there was something just tickling at the back of my brain that I couldn't figure out, wait, there's something not right about this scene. And I realized <laughs> in the second viewing what it was is – I could I still am not sure why was Zemo out of his cell because <laughs> because you know Bucky goes to visit him and he's in that like that chamber mm -hmm. and and then the next thing we know when Bucky's talking about uh you know he slips the note to the to that prisoner and they start the fight yeah. and he's like someone in the confusion could use it as a chance to attack one of the guards or however he said it and we see Zemo doing that we see Zemo getting the guards uniform mm -hmm. And so I went, well, why was he out of his cell? And the only thing I can think of is that that little, maybe that little interrogation chamber isn't his actual cell. That's just where he goes when people are going to talk to him. Or visit and him. So, the, his yeah. Hannibal Lecter cell. That was, yeah. yeah. And so they were transporting him. He was in between his actual cell and that little, that little chamber was when – Bucky pulled the fire alarm or that when Bucky got the fight thing started because Zemo. Yeah, he, he, he sent a little note to the guy saying he's mm -hmm. going to kill you tonight. You better right. do something. Right. And, and then, then Zemo, Zemo was the one. Yeah. And right. Zemo pulls the fire alarm just as uh, Bucky explains it and he's able to get out. Right. right. Yeah, that was okay. pretty cool. Yeah. So that was that was the one thing that that just confused me a, a little bit was why we was out of the cell. But I think I think you know I can I can move past it just like other the other episodes. There's something little I can I can move past that. So. Yeah. <laughs> My number five is that little opening commercial we get of the the GRC and that whole reset, restore, rebuild. You know, and then later in the episode we find out that they're kind of hoarding 
supplies in these warehouses and stuff. And that's what the Flag Smashers are kind of stealing and trying to get out to people who are in these refugee camps. And so there's more to this organization than meets the eye. They're not Transformers, though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But there's definitely some, I I have to imagine there's something more, you know, evil, maybe not straight evil, but there's got to be something more going on with this, with this organization that, what is it, the, the, what are they called? The The Flag Smashers. No, the the GRC. What does it stand for? Oh, I forgot. Uh, (laughs) The Great Restoration Center or Corporation or something, something like that. Reparation Center or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something like global reparation. Yeah. Reparation. Yeah. Yeah. Center. So there's got to be something more there because why would they, you know, they almost have, they have these guards that have these uniforms and they almost look like, it almost looks like a military type organization even, you know, Hmm. but. So we'll see. Yeah. It, it's an interesting there's a there's a lot more going on within mm-hmm. the the show as it is when it comes to the flag smashers. You got Zemo, this power broker mm-hmm. who we don't know because we have not seen him or her. We've mm-hmm. only seen that one woman and she got dispatched real quick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and- we've heard people talk about the power broker. Yes. And and everybody has talked about him or her, but nobody actually knows who it is. So Exactly. I have my thoughts on that. But my number four would be we find out why Zemo is Baron Zemo. Mm-hmm. So apparently he is royalty and is a baron before Sokovia was destroyed, so he's quite wealthy. Mm-hmm. And ha- and obviously he was trained in fighting and combat. I'm sure he was in the Sokovian army or something, <laughs> special mm-hmm. ops maybe. Maybe it's something that his country requires him. And uh, I just love his assistant on the plane, and, and that was played by Nicholas Pryor, who is a legendary actor from film, and we've seen him in Risky Business, and he played Tom Cruise's uh, character Joel, his dad, mm. okay. in that movie. So I, I recognized his face right away. I had to go look it up. Interesting. Yeah. And we we see that, you know, Zemo has a private jet <laughs> and mm-hmm. he's got his own personal assistant on there. They make their little uh, jokes about it. If, if the, uh, what was it? The wine is bad or something. Give mm-hmm. it to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he uses them, you know, basically Zemo is using Sam and Bucky as they are using him. Mm-hmm. And there's still something underlying within Zemo that I'm curious about. What is... He, what does he need them for? Yeah. What, you know, what is he using them for in this yeah. respect? Yeah. And Zemo was my number four as well. And just because I don't, and we talked a little bit, I think we were, we hadn't started recording it or maybe we, right at the beginning of the recording, we talked a little bit about Zemo mm-hmm. and how he's not as fleshed out in the comic books is what it sounds like to me yeah. as we're getting here. So it was interesting, you know, they get him this little 48 hour pass or kind of like 48 hours. It's probably going to be more than 48 hours, but uh, mm-hmm. they get him this little pass out of prison and uh, which is actually an escape. And that, you know, th- that was an interesting scene between Hoskins and Cap when they're talking about that whole escape and whether they actually helped them or not. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was great to, to get to know this character. And I was surprised by a few things that even though, you know, he says he lost a lot of his wealth, but obviously he still has some of it because he still had that place with all the cars. He still had the jet, mm-hmm. he's st- you know, like everybody's acting like he's not in prison, you know, <laughs> like he hasn't been in prison for however long it's been since uh, Winter Soldier. You know, which, whether it was the whole blip, so he's gone through that, yeah, maybe and whether he was whether he blipped out or not. I don't, you know, I'm not sure, but it was interesting too. How did he get that book from Bucky? Because it's like all of a sudden he has Bucky's book and he's was looking it Bucky's at it. book. I thought it was his book. No, it was because he because Bucky snatches it away from him and takes hmm. it back and says, If you ever touch this again or something like that, oh, uh, and then. Falcon reveals that it actually was Steve's book hmm. that Bucky is now using because he says that that's Steve's book that he had when he came out of the ice. So I, I, that was, seen, was a little bit, yeah, it was a little bit interesting that he that he had somehow gotten that book away and then Bucky took it back from him because he didn't know who Nakajima was. He hmm. he he knew that that book is oh these are people that you wronged when you were the Winter Soldier, but I don't know this person's name. Mm-hmm. 
and and so because he wouldn't he, he wouldn't know the random name of, of some kid that he, exactly that, yeah he, that he wasn't ordered to kill that he just killed because it was a witness you know but yeah then, yeah it was that one kid that mm-hmm. he tried to confess to the father for mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and he hasn't yet right yeah and he hasn't yet um but you know then in in Nagel's lab we see him uh take the gun and I was I was curious about that when he when he found the gun and he's kind of walking around the lab and what's he going to do with it and then suddenly we just see him execute Nagel because hmm. right because Zemo's whole thing is he doesn't want the super soldier serum to get out so he has to kill Nagel because we find out that Nagel was able to synthesize it and, and I'll talk some more about the super soldier serum sure. yep. later uh, but but yeah, yeah which so makes just, me think of more comic comparisons to it too mm-hmm. because they mention other people that have taken it mm-hmm. and we've already seen one with uh what was it uh we saw the older man last week was it mm-hmm. isaiah yeah isaiah isaiah, isaiah. Radley. yeah and so there were other people other than steve that over the years that had something that shows general ross involvement in trying to replicate it not just hydra but also mm-hmm. the government right right and we see there, there were a few successful test subjects after steve Yes. Uh, so. so we're on to my number three. Yes. And, well, I found it funny how Zemo's suggestions still somewhat work on with Bucky. And the way Zemo was able to order Bucky to attack those guys in the bar. And I wasn't sure if Bucky was playing along or not. It was kind of strange. Or if he was really under Zemo's influence through his, his commands. It was kind of creepy how Zemo was mm-hmm. presenting the Winter Soldier to Selby, though, mm-hmm. when they had that little meeting. And then Zemo kills Selby, I think. I, I kind of got lost in a crossfire when I every time I watched it. I'm like... I think what happened there is I think that the sniper, the the person from Wakanda who we see at the end... Did that. I, I think... Yeah, I think she did that because it, it's right when Selby says, kill them, mm-hmm. that she gets shot. Hmm. And then, and then Zemo's like, "Oh, they're going to blame this on us. You guys better leave your weapons, and we got to sneak out of here." Yeah. So I think that's what what happened is that it was it was the sniper who actually killed Selby. Yeah, I think you're right she, because yeah. she had threatened all of yeah, them. Yeah, because at our time, I was like, "Look, I was like, who shot that?" And I'm trying yeah. to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And when you saw her at the end, you know, of course, you know, Zemo says, "Oh, you have a garden angel." Mm-hmm. When Sharon shows up, but you know, obviously uh, they had another one. <laughs> it's interesting you make that because I, I really didn't think uh, Bucky was under his influence at all. I thought it was all acting by Bucky. But you bring up an interesting point that maybe, you know, we'll have to see if it works again. If Zemo is able to kind of influence him again, we'll have to see if that's. But I, I felt like Bucky was was just was just play acting as that's what i thought too so but i'm thinking yeah because the the way he was touching bucky though presenting him and caressing his face Mm -hmm. zemo it was just like that's a bit creepy yeah (laughs) yeah well and he was he was playing that part because he was trying to keep them out of the radar but it didn't last very long so even with even with Sam, you know, it doesn't last very long. Him playing the part of this smiling tiger. <laughs> That's a funny. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so that brings us to my number three, which is Sharon Carter. And again, this is another character that I've only kind of lightly knew about from the, from the movies. Mm-hmm. And so it's interesting that, again, we have another character like Sam who's not enhanced, but we see her really fighting really well. And, of course, she's just fighting normal yeah. bounty hunters those guys but she really did a good job and it it occurred to me again that this is a violent show oh yeah for disney it says but... for 14 plus if you look at it and they have a okay one of those things in the very beginning where they say it's not for suitable for children or okay. something okay that's that's i think i cuz the the way i'm viewing it i don't think i see those warnings so that's good mm-hmm. that's good but but it, i also noted that it's not bloody violence though no it's not but there is killing yeah so i think i think that's what keeps it in disney's kind of production sort of wheelhouse is that it's violent but it's not a bloody violence Mm. you know so but then there's a couple of things about sharon that we we don't really we haven't gotten the full the full story of what happened because 
She says she's on the run. She's been there. She's been there in Madripoor. She's working for this black market art gallery mm-hmm. she's able to find nagel because remember selby said that they would not be able to find nagel without her mm-hmm. and but but yet sharon is able to find nagel and then at the end when that woman picks her up which again because i freezed the credits mm-hmm. that woman is is in the credits is identified as sharon's bodyguard huh <laughs> yeah, I I found that interesting. That's that, that's all. No name, just Sharon's bodyguard, and I thought that was interesting. Maybe she's the power broker. <laughs> I, that's I'm kind of wondering now if if Sharon Carter, because obviously that she's there's more going on because she says we have two problems, and she's talking about Sam and Bucky, and mm. then remember that conversation Carly has where she knows that Nagel is dead, and they have all that what's left of the super soldier serum that he had. Remember he said he made 20 vials. Mm -hmm. There's only eight right now that have been used. That leaves 12 more vials hanging around somewhere Mm -hmm, that the flag smashers have. And so I'm wondering if Sharon Carter has some sort of affiliation with the flag flag smashers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that guy brings up Madripoor to Carly and I'm kind of like, Hmm. So Hmm. it's, it's going to be interesting uh, going forward to see, uh, how much deeper Sharon Carter is involved in this. Yeah, same here. Uh, well, it leads right into my number two, which would be getting to see Sharon Carter. We find out where she's been, obviously, mm-hmm. ever since Winter Soldier and the blip, obviously. <laughs> we haven't, <laughs> nobody's heard or seen of her ever since. She wasn't at, uh, at Stark's funeral at all or anything mm-hmm. <laughs> back in the day. So apparently the paintings in the Louvre are fake. That's yeah. interesting. And I love how Ben, it's like <laughs> Bucky tells Sam, just Google it. And he looks at it, he goes, see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's for private collectors and, uh, and Madripoor. And Sharon helps them reluctant, you know, reluctantly helps Bucky and Sam at this point because mm-hmm. she feels that she can't go back. She's got a target on her head and she doesn't believe Sam when, you know, he says he might be able to help out and he can't really do anything. Honestly, she she knows a lot more about Sam now than mm-hmm. she did before, if you think about it. Yeah. Apparently, she's seen a lot of stuff on TV, knows that he's in financial distress with his sister about the boat and the business. So she's got her hands in deep. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, she's another like power or not, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, you already said it, power broker. Yeah. I don't think she's the actual power broker, but I think she's definitely involved with the working with, the with them yeah, in some with, way. Yeah. Somehow. And yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because she really does a quick turnaround because first Sam says that he can help her and she's like, no, you can't help me. And then all of a sudden she's like, well, I don't want charity. And he's like, fine, help us find Nagel, and then I'll I'll get your name cleared. And then suddenly she goes, oh, okay, as long as it's not charity, as long as I'm doing something to earn, you know, getting getting my name cleared. But I'm kind of like, what change? I'm exactly, like, yeah. yeah, what went through from that to charity to quid pro quo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's still who he is. He's still, you know, not going to be able to to clear, I don't know. It was It was a quick turnaround for her, though, that I thought was interesting. Yeah. So my number two, we kind of already talked about it. Just Bucky, that fight in the bar, which I thought was I thought was really cool. And <laughs> uh, so let me look at my notes real quick. And we talked about Madripoor, but I, I did do a little bit of research that Madripoor is uh, this country that's invented simply for the Marvel comic book universe. And so I don't know if this is the first time we're seeing it in the movies, or not. I think it's the first time we're seeing yeah, it. Yeah, it is for me. It is. <laughs> on screen so that's that's kind of cool but it's it's kind of like this outlaw kind of land where people can go there's no extradition to the united states and it it gives them it gives marvel this place where they can send their heroes and they can do things that they wouldn't really the heroes wouldn't really be doing in like new york or chicago or mm. or some big city like that so yeah, I, I thought was, that was kind of cool. Yeah, especially with the fight scene at the end by the freight cargo mm-hmm. and all the explosions, you would expect the police, the military. No, nobody comes. Right, <laughs> just, nobody even bothers. It's just yeah, yeah. it's just another another day in in Madripoor. So. Yeah, yeah, it's like a pirate cove to them. They mm-hmm. all are. It, it's this city built with uh, villains, I guess, if you want to call mm-hmm. it that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But uh, to top on that drink, that was pretty funny how, you know, it's like, oh, the usual. And, yeah. and he cuts open a snake and takes out the venom and puts it in the drink. And you can see Sam, he doesn't want to drink it. Then he just shuts it, shoots it down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't tell what that drink was, and I didn't try to look it up because I don't want to know. Well, there <laughs> are there are some exotic drinks like that where they use snake poison. Yeah, in them, <laughs> and I've seen it. There was a movie I watched. Uh, oh yeah, it had Gal Gadot and uh, Zach Val Galifianakis in it, and John Hamm. And, oh okay. Uh, John Hamm and Gal Gadot were pretty much uh, spies or something. And he take he takes uh, Zach Galifianakis to this bar, underground CD bar, and they that's what they do. Mm. And then okay. next thing you know, he's like he's he's standing there, and then the, the snake bites him. Yeah. But they, <laughs> there is such a thing. There is. Yeah. I, I don't know what it's called, but it's interesting to say the least that it could actually kill you. I think. <laughs> yeah. <Oof. laughs> so that would lead me to my number one, and yes. My number one would be the scene when Sharon brings all three of the freight to the freight dock mm -hmm. and they they go to see the designer of the super soldier serum, which would be Nagel. Mm -hmm. Hydra brought him in originally and then the CIA brought him back or took him in to extract the serum from a stable subject from, you've already mentioned it, from other subjects mm -hmm. that had survived the super soldier serum now mind you in the comics there were other people that were experimenting with the super soldier serum the man who became man thing was actually doing that as well and they also allude in the comics in some alternate versions about with uh, the weapon x system mm. that they put in place where we get wolverine from and how that was part of the super soldier serum um like experimentation that they were trying to do hmm. so it sounded like to me that general ross may be involved in some way because we have not seen or heard from general ross in a long time but he was the one that injected blonsky now we're probably going to see blonsky in the she hulk show because it's been rumored that they're going to get Emil Blonsky to come back and do... Uh, I'm curious if he's going to look like he did at the very end of The Incredible Hulk. But for the fact that he was another one that was taking the super soldier serum or had a version of it that Ross gave him. Mm. And Ross is so determined. Now, mind you, supposedly he went through surgery when the last time we saw him because he had a heart attack. And then, you know, I, I think he's probably going to come in later on at some point, not within this show, probably later on in a movie. But the the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of the Thunderbolts, which is Ross's group, were subjected to the super soldier serum stuff as well and himself. And he mm. becomes Red Hulk in yeah. the comics. Mm. So, and there's been lots of talk over the past four years that we're going to get the Thunderbolts and we're going to see Red Hulk at some point. And I, I'll find it funny if that's the case. I think the Flag Smashers are just an issue, but it was created by somebody who leaked it. And they, they might be a ruse, you know. They might be something that is set up to, uh, like, you know, a distraction for these mm. guys. Yeah, I couldn't tell when she was having that whole conversation that, you know, it's a weird timeline because Nagel says he disappeared in the blip. Mm -hmm. And when he came back, nobody had advanced his research. So that's why he had to go to Madripoor mm -hmm. and go to the, and go to the power broker. And he developed it for the power broker. And then the flag smashers stole it from mm -hmm. him and they took the serum. Yeah. You know, meaning... those eight, those eight people, because she says that she says how, you know, how long our veins were on fire before it kind of settled. And this leads really well into my number one as well, because I, I do want to talk about that scene with Nagel. Sure. Where he talks about his development of the, the serum. I was really surprised he didn't have some sort of an alarm or something on his door to, to tell him that people, because if your door is just going to be unlocked, <laughs> you know, and anybody can just walk in, I, that was really, that well, was kinda, a moment. Kind of reminds me of the Punisher when we were covering that. And what was his name? Uh, they called him, the communications guy that oh yeah I, oh it, just, it escapes it's me it's been now. so long but, since we did it but but yeah but he had he had all sorts of like cameras and and, and he stuff. had a gun underneath the desk just like that guy did too remember yeah. when frank took that out too so we mm -hmm. see zemo actually take it 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so once I got past that, though, because, okay, he's surprised. They, they surprise him, and then they, they strap him into the chair, and they've got their <laughs> guns on him. I thought it was interesting that he explained that his serum was more – was different – because he he called it more, I can't remember what the word was he used for it. He didn't say exotic, something like that though, because he didn't want them all like jacked up. And, and that's why Carly is still this tiny little thing, mm -hmm. but yet she's got the super strength of and agility and stuff. They're, of it's a like super they're soldier. slightly enhanced in some they're, respect. They're enhanced, but they didn't get the bulkiness like what Captain America got. You know, like when we saw Steve Rogers in the first Avenger, he's this skinny little guy. Yeah, or Abomination in the Incredible Hulk where it mutates. Right, yeah. right. And they had to put him in that in that metal contraption kind of thing as well. And that's what Nagel says. Is, you know, there's no need for machines. There's no need. My serum is just you just take the serum and it makes you into a super soldier. And and so I understand why Zemo shot him because Zemo's like, this guy can recreate it and there's going to be more of these people out there. We don't want that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Be an army of people that he can handle. Plus, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, Zemo wouldn't be able to like because at one point he was looking to do that. But that was his his way of uh, eluding people. He, they, he made it look like he wanted that, but he wanted to really kill. Right all the Avengers at that point, you know, that's, that's why he pitted all the Avengers against each other due to the winter soldier. It was a way right. to get them uh, involved. So it's kind of that kind of ruse or that, mm -hmm. you know, segue of like, a, it's a different story. So yeah. I'm curious if there's a different one. So that's all I had for my number one, just this, that cool. whole scene with Nagel inside his bunker there. And uh, like I said, then Zemo shoots him. And uh, what about your notes? Uh, you have um, a few more? Yeah, so I got a few things. We already talked about Madripoor. The scene at the beginning with Cap and Hoskins when they go into that Flag Smashers, kind of that safe house we saw last week. Mm -hmm. And we, again, we kind of see the menace behind this new Captain America because that guy spits on him. Mm -hmm. And I really thought he was almost, I thought he was going to beat that guy up. I really Same thought here. he was going to lose it. And uh, and Hoskins kind of pulls him back. And when they get outside, Hoskins is like, look, they're just, you know, they're like, he kind of compares them to Robin Hood kind of thing. He said, they're just trying to bring supplies to these people and that, and that, uh, you know, garners uh, loyalty from them. And that's why we can't, we can't find these flag smashers. And he's like, but they're still terrorists. And of course we see that at the end of the show of the episode, when Carly blows up that building with those guys in it, hmm. you know, and even her partner is like, there's still innocent people in there. And she's like, no, this is the only way, they're going to listen to us. And so we suddenly we see the menace and the bad side of it. You know, whereas last week we kind of got to see a more, I don't want to say gentle, but we, we saw the kind of the good side of the flag smashers where they're trying to help people. Mm -hmm. But here we see that terrorist side where they're blowing people up and killing people. Yeah. And they're not taking names either because they're just mm -hmm. blowing them up. Yeah. Well, I'll go with one of mine, which is pretty funny. Sam getting in the car with Bucky and <laughs> Zemo, and we get a call back from Captain America Winter Soldier mm -hmm. when Sam says, can you move your seat up, please? <laughs> and Bucky just saying no. <laughs> but this time, Sharon was outside the car, and Zemo was the one who was the driver. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, another one of mine that we've we've not talked about yet is just uh, more of that humor we saw when they're running away from Zemo's lab and like Sam is like is like all right we're gonna go left now and Bucky goes the other direction and he's like it's in every action movie you go this way yeah, exactly you know? um, <laughs> the um, humor in it yep <laughs> but but then we have that moment where Zemo saves them from those bounty hunters by blowing them up mm -hmm. and then he finds the car and you know you think and this is you alluded to this earlier obviously Zemo either thinks that he needs these guys for something or he does need these guys for something because why would he stick around he mm -hmm. should have you know you think he would have ran off or tried to escape but no he comes around with the car and picks him up and he's like i know where we can go and then he flies into that safe house in uh that, that last country they were in where where bucky meets the, the woman from wakanda oh yes yeah yeah so uh, i have a couple others but the mm -hmm. the next one would be Zemo hides hiding his mask from Sam and Bucky when he goes mm -hmm. into the car to get some stuff that he stashed away. So he hides that mask. We only see that mask come on when he's ready to blow up those guys at the freight mm -hmm. place. So it's where, but he takes it off right away, if you notice. Yeah. So uh, either he's going to use that as a way, or maybe he is the power broker. Hmm. Hmm. 
Interesting. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but I thought it was pretty cool. The only last one I thought, and I, I think we've, I've already mentioned it, is the woman from Wakanda that Bucky meets there at the end is Io. And like I said, I, I only know that because I freeze. I actually paused the credits and I went through the whole list of people. And I'm like, who is that? Because I didn't know <laughs> who it was. Like, I'm like, I know it's a person from Wakanda, but who is it? And uh, and sure enough, it's I'm not even going to try to say the actress's name. <laughs> yeah, so. but it wasn't Denai Guerrero's character, no. obviously. No, at first I thought it might be, and that's why I was kind of confused. But the other thing that I noticed in the credits, and I, I think they did this in WandaVision as well, or they do it, oh no, Star Trek Discovery would do this. If you watch the credits closely, mm-hmm. there's there's panels that are blank in between names. Like you'll have, like like this this week we had Sebastian Stan, Anthony Mackie, Emily Van Camp, and then there was a blank. Hmm. There was like a blank screen, and then it went to the next person's name. Really? And then and then there was a couple other spots where it went to like a blank screen, where I assume they're going to be adding cast members' names to those blank spots. Interesting. In, in the credits, because the same thing was there was one right after when it said with Daniel Bruhl. And then the next screen is a blank screen before it goes to the rest of the of the credits. So I'm hesitantly confident that we're going to get some more big stars in oh, this. Uh, uh, they they said we're supposed to get like a big cameo, mm-hmm. but uh, the, the the rumor mill is is that it's somebody who is grounded. So hmm. who could be grounded within the Marvel Cinematic U- Universe that we haven't seen yet? Mm-hmm. A lot of people are trying to say, oh, we're going to see a mutant. We're going to see. I was like, I don't think they're going to bring in mutants at this point. I think it's going to be somebody more involved, nefarious. Like I stated, I, I, I had thoughts of General Ross mm-hmm. being the power broker, maybe Zemo being the power broker. We just don't know it yet. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Dr. Doom. Maybe this is his segue before we actually see him in the next Ant-Man and the Wasp in that movie. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, just interesting. Yeah. Next up, well, what was with Zemo dancing in the club, just doing the fist pumps and everything? Uh, you saw everybody. He he looked out of place, and not yeah. just Bucky, but him. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Uh, the conversation between Bucky and Sam about doing what they were doing, mm-hmm. Bucky brings up that Sam backed up Steve during the Sokovia Accords, and that they were both breaking the law then. And all Bucky is asking Sam to do right now is the same thing. And he was questioning, why would you back up Steve and not me? Right. And Mm -hmm. we're both, we were both friends of Steve and had the same feeling. Why can't you do that again? So that, that was, that was an interesting conversation that I, that I got out of the, uh, the episode. Nice. So we got a couple of quotes here each. My first one is uh, uh, when they – before we realize that he's broken Zemo out of prison, Sam says, look, Zemo is going to mess with our heads, especially yours. No offense. And then Bucky just goes, offense. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was good. <laughs> Doesn't he call him the bionic man in reference when he's talking to Sharon? <laughs> oh, right he, said, here. he said something about his arm or something like that. I can't remember yeah, how I, he put it. I think yeah. he called him the bionic man. <laughs> Uh, first one I have would be Zemo Mm -hmm. and he says something is still there. And that's in reference to Bucky. And then that's after Zemo uses the keywords that he used in winter soldier, you know, in that movie to, to control Bucky and and Zemo just responds, at least you were frozen when you were in prison. Mm -hmm. And that was referencing when Hydra would freeze Bucky and use him every once in a while. So he was literally in prison during that time. Then yeah. he was frozen again at the end of the movie in Wakanda, at the end of Winter Soldier, when I hit him there. Yeah. So my only other one uh, is you alluded to it earlier, Zemo, when they when they see Zemo's cars and they see his plane and Zemo says, I'm a baron. I was royalty until your people destroyed my country. Yeah. It pretty much explains a lot. Mm-hmm. And the last one I would have, well, it's just a funny one, Sam screaming because, uh, you know, Sharon had to get them all decked out to go to that party. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I can't run in these heels. <laughs> I was on the floor laughing because <laughs> he's not used to dressing like that fancy. <laughs> all right. So, well, there's no feedback. Uh, I didn't receive anything. So I checked Facebook. I checked uh, our email. So if you guys feel the need, do send some in when you can. And we'll just move right into uh, podcast recommendations. Sure. 
the only one I've got this week is uh, is Strange Indeed is covering covering uh, the movie Promising Young Woman, Oscar nominated uh, movie pro- uh, Promising Young Woman. Paik and Rima discuss it. Uh, I watched it. I sent them a voicemail, and uh, I don't. I'm not going to spoil anything about the movie, but uh, I I don't know how to feel about that movie. Have you Have you watched that yet? I haven't Promising watched Young it. Woman. It's uh, it's interesting. Okay. <laughs> so I don't think it was my cup of tea. That's why I wasn't. Uh, running to yeah, it. it's it's kind of revenge a revenge movie i'll just put uh, it that way i don't okay. want to give yeah. too much away but uh, that's not my kind of yeah yeah i probably would pass but there was a, a show that was coming on amazon that uh soon that that i thought that they could actually pick up i forgot the name of it but it looks interesting kind of mm-hmm. similar to lights out and has an all black cast and it's really good it looks interesting mm-hmm. i'm i'm looking forward to seeing it hopefully soon okay. as far as podcast recommendations for me uh, it would be walking dead cast with jason and lucy they'll be covering or at least covering the last episode which is here is negan which i got to see which i thought was really good so i look it forward was to really good yeah hearing I, I, what I, they have to say i gotta watch it for a second time and send in a voicemail because woo, it was good <laughs> so uh, well, with that, we'll just move right into feedback and how everybody can get in touch with us. Sure. Once again, as we say every week, you can find us on any uh, podcast player of choice you've got out there, uh, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. If there's an opportunity for you to give us a review or a rating, please do that. We would love to hear from you and, and read those on the on the podcast. Those help us with those analytics. You can check out our website at panels to pixelspodcast.com. You can also submit your theories to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We have an email that uh, we would love to interact with you at as well. Panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right in the middle the number one at gmail.com. And then of course we have a YouTube page, which is a YouTube channel, excuse me, which is panels to pixels podcast. Uh, go there, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and check us out. Yep. Well, Next week, we'll be back with further discussion of the episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. We'll come back with uh, Steve and I with doing episode four. And I will be moving on to episode fo- four, five, five of oh, Invincible. Oh, right, because you already did. Did you, did you guys? Yeah, we recorded earlier. So you guys, will, you guys will get this too this week. Very so you cool. can hear Jamie and I covering the first four episodes of Invincible. So we'll be covering episode five and we just briefly went over our highlights of each uh, overall with the first four episodes and our favorite quotes, thoughts about the the show. And it was pretty cool. I I suggest you guys listen in on that. It's fun. If you're into anime or that that kind of weird Justice League splatter kind <laughs> of show i suggest it uh, it's kind of like the boys on crack i think <laughs> but in anime form and you could definitely tell that there was a reason why they didn't do a live action of that particular series yeah i can't i look forward to hearing that too yeah it's gonna it's it's pretty cool she did a great job very cool so where else can listeners hear us well I can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast and the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. So we cover action films, adventure films, and suspense films. So we, Steve and I wrapped up uh, Highlander a week mm-hmm. ago. It should be coming out this week as well. I just been had a long week of work, unfortunately. But uh, you'll get that in your ears soon. As well as I'm working on getting Ben back back on so he could just talk about Face Off. Oh, very cool. That'll be a fun one. So we'll do that, and that will be coming your way hopefully soon as well. And for me, I send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do. Daphne and I just wrapped up season two of Snowpiercer and uh, looking forward to season three when it comes out. It is in production right now, uh, but who knows with COVID still being out there what the uh what the situation is going to be like or how long it's going to be before we actually get uh season three of snowpiercer but i'll uh, be looking forward to that coming out that'll be cool so well that was pretty much our show and i just want to thank everybody for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels to pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night